GST registration is a process by which a taxpayer it is a process by which a taxpayer gets himself registered under the GST all the business supplying goods whose turnover exceeds rupees 40 lakh in a financial year are required to register as a normal taxpayer if you want to apply for GST registration PAN card is must and should so PAN is nothing but permanent account number Hello everyone, I am Arun Kumar, lecturer in Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Dear students, welcome to this new session, session number one on unit number two, that is registration and taxable events. And at the subject, GST law and practice, which is there for fifth sem BCom students who are studying under University of Mysore. Yes, dear students, in the earlier session, that is in the previous sessions, we discussed about what is GST, how it works and what is the history of GST, what are the rates we have under GST, types of GST and the definitions which comes under the CGST Act 2017 and all. So in this session, we will be discussing about what is this registration and also what is this taxable event. So now in GST, if any person, we all know that GST is an indirect tax, right? It is an indirect tax. So if any person, okay, if any person running the business, if he is running a business, whether he is a manufacturer or as a wholesaler or as an agent, whatever the business he is running, he is supposed to register under the GST authority in order to for the smooth run of the business or in order to get all the facilities from the government and to get loan or to you know purchase the goods or to sell the goods for whatever the reason, he should be a registered person under the GST. And if you ask me that is it is compulsory to register under the GST, yes, it is not compulsory. It is not compulsory. So, only in some circumstances it is compulsory to register under the GST authority or register under the GST purview to be a legal entity and to get all the advantages as a business entity from the government. So, what is registration under the GST purview? So, under GST purview, GST registration is a process by which a taxpayer, it is a process by which a taxpayer gets himself registered under the GST. Yes, here it is a process where the taxpayer is going to register himself under the GST purview. That is the basic meaning of the GST registration. Next, once a business is successfully registered, a unique registration number is assigned to them known as the goods and services tax identification number. It is in short, it is called GSTIN number. So here, every person, the person who is running the business, he is going to register himself with the GST authority. If you are you know, a student, if you want to study in a college, what you are supposed to do first? You are supposed to go to a college and you are supposed to take admission, right? If you want to admit your brother to a college as a student, first you are supposed to go to a college, you are supposed to take application and you know paying the fees. Then your brother or you are going to be a student of that college and every day you can go and attend the classes without registration or without getting the admission it is not possible so in the same way to get all the facilities from the gst you know uh, authority or from the government as a business entity first you have to register with the gst authority and once you get registered under the gst authority they will be issuing you a unique number they will be issuing you a unique number to identify you as a business entity that unique number is called GST IN that is the goods and services tax identification number they will give you if once you register with the authority. This is a 15 digit number assigned by the central government after the taxpayers obtain registration. Yes, it is a 15 digit number. Okay, it is a 15 digit alphanumeric number will be assigned to you by the GST authority once you registered with the GST. If you are operating from more than one state then you will have to take separate registration for each state you are operating from yes for example you have your business in both karnataka and in andhra and also in tamil nadu okay you have your business in three states what you are supposed to do under the each state you are supposed to register separately one registration for all the states is not possible if you are running your business in more than one state, in two or three states, in that respective state, 
you are supposed to register as a business entity. In case if you are running your business only in Karnataka, then one registration is enough. If you are running in Andhra also, then in Andhra also you are supposed to take the registration for your business entity. So here GST registration is nothing but it is a registration where the taxpayer is going to register his business under the GST purview. And once he registered with the GST purview, the GST authority is going to give a unique 15 digit alphanumeric number where it is the identification for the particular taxpayer or the businessman. And here, once if you registered with the authority, you will be getting that 15 digit number. And if you are operating more than in one state, if you are operating in more than one state, then you are supposed to register under the state where you are operating from. If you are operating in Karnataka, in Karnataka you are supposed to register. If you are operating in Delhi, in Delhi you are supposed to register. If you are operating in Rajasthan or in you know, the Andhra Pradesh or in Kerala, in separate states if you are operating, there you are supposed to register your business. This is the basic introduction with respect to the meaning of registration, how a person is going to register with the GST authority. And who is eligible to register under GST? As I said, it is not compulsory to register with the GST authority. And sometimes, even though if you go and register a business also, they will not register. There should be some, you know, criteria are supposed to be fulfilled. The criteria are supposed to be fulfilled. Then only the authority will be giving you the registration certificate or then only they will be accepting your application for registration. Then who are all eligible to get registered? If you look into that, all the business supplying goods whose turnover exceeds rupees 40 lakh in a financial year are required to register as a normal taxpayers. Yes. If you are running a business and if your turnover, that means the total sales for a financial year, for one year, if it crosses rupees 40 lakhs, okay, if you are a businessman or if you are running any business and if your total sales or total turnover for one financial year, if it crosses rupees 40 lakhs, then you are supposed to be registered compulsorily as a you know business entity with the GST authority and you will be called normal taxable person. So if you are running business, if your income crosses 40 lakhs, the, the, so not the income, the turnover crosses 40 lakhs, then what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to register yourself with the GST authority and you will be called normal tax person. However, the threshold limit is rupees 20 lakh if you have a business in northeastern states. Yes, if you are running a business in northeastern state and if your turnover is 20 lakh, then you are supposed to register with the GST authority because for other states it is 40 lakhs. Okay, for other states it is 40 lakhs, but for northeastern states it is rupees 20 lakhs. If you are you know, running any business in northeastern states, if your turnover crosses 20 lakhs, you are supposed to register under the GST purview. The northeastern states like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And the turnover limit is rupees 20 lakh and in case of special category states, rupees 10 lakh for mixed supply and for services providers. Yes, for some special category of you know, states or for union territories, the turnover will be rupees 10 lakhs with respect to services and rupees 20 lakhs with respect to rupees 20 lakhs with respect to mixed supply. So here for registration under GST, if your turnover crosses 40 lakhs, okay, if you are running your business in normal states other than the northeastern states, if your turnover crosses 40 lakhs, then you are supposed to register. If you are running your business in northeastern states, then again it is 20 lakh, okay, it is. 20 lakh you are supposed to register. What is 20 lakh? The turnover in a particular financial year. If your turnover crosses rupees 20 lakhs, then you are supposed to register under the GST purview if you belongs to northeastern states. For some other special category states and for union territories, if you are earning 20 lakh of turnover, if your turnover is 20 lakhs and 10 lakh with respect to services. If your turnover crosses this much, then you are compulsorily have to register with the GST authority and this is the eligibility criteria to get registered with the GST authority. Next, the documents required for GST registration. Yes, what and all the documents are required for GST registration. So if you look into that for the documents required, 
द फर्स्ट थिंग इज परमानेंट अकाउंट नंबर यस परमानेंट अकाउंट नंबर इट इज कॉल्ड पैन सो to apply for gst you should have to obtain a pan card so without pan card you can't apply for gst registration if you want to apply for gst registration pan card is must and should so pan is nothing but permanent account number next one copy of the aadhar card yes copy of aadhar card is also most important because without the copy of aadhar card you can't be applying the application for registration under the gst pubu because the, without identification of a individual person they can't give you the registration right they can't give you the license for your business so to identify you as a individual person aadhar card is also must and should so along with the pan card you are supposed to submit your aadhar card also next proof of business registration or incorporation certificate yes proof of business or incorporation certificate if you are running a business in a particular place then you are supposed to give you give the gst authority about your license details or about the incorporation certificate issued by the authority or by the government so the gst authority have to know whether you are running a business or not whether you have taken the license to run the business or not so at the time of filling the application and submitting the documents you are also supposed to submit your incorporation certificate which is issued by the government to run your business then only that will be considered as you are running a legal business so along with pan card aadhar cards you are supposed to submit your incorporation certificate also of your business next identity and address proof of promoters directors with a photograph yes if you have any promoters or the directors with respect to your business okay what you are supposed to give you are supposed to give their identity and the address proof of those promoters and directors so these documents are must and should and also along with those documents you are supposed to submit the bank account statement and also a cancelled check if you are running a business and if you open a bank account in the name of your business then what you are supposed to do you are supposed to submit the bank details to the authority you are supposed to submit the bank details of your business what is the transaction you know happening in the particular bank accounts with respect to the business and what is the total amount you received what is the total amount you you know paid this details the government wants to know about your business for that purpose you have to submit the bank account statement of your business and also the cancelled check next authorization letter or board resolution for authorized signatory yes that means authorization letter is nothing but they are going to appoint one person to sign for every document okay every person like the owner of the business or the you know directors promoters everybody will not come and sign for every each and every you know applications or for each and every documents they are going to appoint one person to sign on each and every documents okay who is that person whom they have appointed we will get to know by this authorization letter so that authorization letter should also be submitted by the person who is applying for registration under the gst and at the last you also supposed to submit the digital signature the person who appointed to sign on all the documents with respect to the business process the digital signature of that person is also supposed to be at attached along with your application so if you look into the documents what and all we required yes a permanent account number that is pan card is required a copy of aadhar card is required and proof of business or incorporation certificate is required because sometimes what we will do we create a fake incorporation certificate or we show our house only as a business place right so just for you know to do some you know illegal things we create a you know you know a dummy company and we show it to the gst authority so to avoid this they required this incorporation certificate and all and what next we required identity and address proof of promoters and directors with their photograph and also we required bank statement and cancelled check and also the authorization letter for the authorized signatory and we also required the digital signature of that particular person so these are all the documents you required and you are supposed to submit along with the application while you are applying for the gst registration and next if you look into the benefits of gst registration if you look into the benefits of gst registration the first benefit for gst registration is gst eliminates the cascading effect of tax yes 
once if you register with the GST authority so that you can avoid the cascading effect under the tax system. So what is this cascading effect? Cascading effect is nothing but tax on tax. Okay, tax on tax. You already paid a tax, again you will be paying the tax on the same product. So if you want to avoid this, you have to register with the GST authority. Next, higher threshold limit for registration. So anyhow, they have provided you the higher threshold limit of rupees 40 lakhs. If your threshold limit, that is the turnover, if it is less than 40 lakhs, you need not to register with the GST authority. If your threshold limit is more than 40 lakhs, that is, if your turnover is more than 40 lakhs, if you are in a normal state, and if you are in northeastern states, if your turnover more than 20 lakhs, then it will be helpful for you to register with the GST authority. And that is also one of the benefits. Next, composition scheme for small business. Yes, if you register under the GST purview, you need not to pay, you know, the higher rate of GST to the authority. For composition scheme, they have their own slab rate and you will be paying the very minimal rate of tax to the government. Only the people who register under the GST purview will get this benefit, not everyone. So to get this benefit of paying the lower rate of tax, you have to register with the GST authority so that you are going to eligible to claim for this composition scheme. So to claim for composition scheme, you should be a registered person under the GST purview. Next, simple and easy online procedure. Yes, why we have to register? What is the benefit we will get? So here, you need not to worry about you have to go to your office and you have to submit all the documents. You have to wait for a particular officer. Need not to worry about this. If you submit through online, okay, if you submit through online, everything will be verified online itself and they will be giving you the registration certificate. That is also one of the benefits. You need not to worry about, you know, I am supposed to go to, you know, office, I am supposed to collect the application. I have to, you know, submit all the hard copies of your, you know, the documents required for registration. No, nothing to worry about that. Everything is online. You can submit all your applications, everything, and it will be verified through online itself and they'll be giving you the license in online only. Next, the number of compliances is lesser. So yeah, here in, you know, GST registration, if you get registered with the GST authority, you will not face any complications at all because you are a registered person everything is legal and you can you know run your business whenever you wherever you want and whenever you want okay you can run the business whenever you want and wherever you want and no one is going to create any nuisance to you because you are a registered person with the gst authority that is also one of the benefit and defined treatment for e-commerce operators yes here if you are e-commerce operators if you register with the gst authority everything is already defined you need not to worry about anything how the process should happen and what is the rate of tax you're supposed to pay and in what basis you are going to pay the tax to the government or you know whether it is relating to time of supply or place of supply everything is defined you need not to worry about anything about this particular aspect so to know about that you have to register with the gst registration to get this benefit of defined treatment for e-commerce operators and Improved efficiency of logistic. Yes, once if you register with the GST authority, no one will question you about your, you know, uh, supply of the product or the services. If you are not registered, then they'll be raising so many questions with respect to your supply of goods or the services, and they'll be asking for all the documents. If you are registered with the GST authority, then they will not be questioning you anything about the documents and all. You can transfer the goods from one place to another place without any you know, uh, problems or the disturbance in the logistical thing. Next, unorganized sector is regulated under the GST. Yes, here, if every person is registered with the GST authority so that they can regulate all the unauthorized sectors into this and they can have the control on all the business entities so that it will not create more complications in the business field and everyone will be having their own kind of registration or license with them and they'll be going with their own work without disturbing the others. So this is about the benefits of GST registration. The first one is GST eliminates the cascading effect of tax. Second one, higher threshold limit for registration. Third one, composition scheme for small business. And fourth one, simple and easy online procedure. 
Next, the number of compliances is lesser. Defined treatment for e-commerce operators. Improved efficiency of logistic. Unorganized sector is regulated under the GST. So, these are all the benefits. So, yes, dear students, in this session, we discussed about what is GST registration? What is the meaning, exact meaning? And who is liable to register under the GST purview? And what is the turnover or threshold limit to register under the GST purview? And we also discussed what are the documents required for GST registration. And also we discussed about the benefits of GST. I hope all of you understood what we discussed in today's session. I'll meet you in the upcoming session. Until then, thank you all. Have a nice day. Namaste.